All right. Earlier today, President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke on the phone for the first time in direct interaction in more than a month. During the call, the prime minister agreed to send a team of officials to Washington to discuss Israel's plan and their operation in Rafah, which is said to be Hamas's last major stronghold in the Gaza Strip. Now, will the Biden administration support Israel's effort or will they continue to question them as they've increasingly been doing? Joining me now to discuss this and more, Congressman Scott Perry. He serves on three House committees, including the Foreign Affairs Committee and the Committee on Oversight and Accountability. He represents the 10th Congressional District of Pennsylvania. Congressman Perry, welcome back to Washington Watch. Well, it's great to be with you, Tony. And I looked at the I watched those comments uh, from uh, uh, President Netanyahu regarding Chuck Schumer. And I just I couldn't help but thinking if only the left and if only Chuck Schumer were as tough on China as he is on Israel, if only that were the case, wouldn't the world be a different place? Uh, this administration and the left have been uh, uh, unfortunately co-opted by the extreme radical anti-Semitic portion of their party. And you're seeing it in uh, in, in the comments of Chuck Schumer at this point. It's, a, it's, it's amazing. It, it's very troubling, uh, Congressman, as I was in Israel last week, I actually sat down with uh, the prime minister and, and, and they clearly would like to have America's support, but they are undeterred because they know their future is at stake and they have to eliminate the threat of Hamas. But I want to ask you a question, Congressman Perry. What if the Republican leadership, let's say uh, the House Speaker Mike Johnson, were to question the funding for Ukraine and say, you know what, I just don't know that we want to support Ukraine. The people of Ukraine need to, oh, you know what, they need to have an election because there's a lot of questions about the capability of President Zelensky to execute this war against the Russians. Don't you think the left would be up in arms? Of course, they would be outraged by all of that. Yet when it's Israel, they seem to have forgotten on October 7th that 1,300 Jews were massacred or taken captive, raped, uh, held hostage, etc. They seem to forget that. And they also seem to have no problem in meddling in Israel's leadership and taking trying to take out the official. It seems like to be the official policy of the Biden administration is to take the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, out of office. But uh, heaven forbid that anybody have an opinion about an American election or the election in Ukraine or Russia or China, for that matter. I mean, th this is incredible. One of our strongest allies uh, really in the world, certainly in the Middle East, is Israel. And in fact, they're the stabilizing force in a very difficult neighborhood over there in the, in the Middle East. And we're talking about, in the middle of a war, d them dissolving their government. And we know how long it took to form a government last time. How would they be able to defend themselves and execute a war in such a situation? This, to me, is, is probably one of the, I, I don't know, a, America's future, I believe, is intertwined with that of Israel, just from a standpoint of, of, of you know, looking at this both militarily, politically and spiritually. This absolutely makes no sense uh, what is being pushed by the Biden administration. Well, it's time for America to wake up to the uncomfortable but realistic fact that the left, the Democrat Party, President Biden and his administration is on both sides of this war. They have been for a a very long time since he came in. They're helping Iran and all of Iran's proxies, including Hamas, including Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, the Houthis, you name it. And so they shouldn't be surprised, unfortunately, with this radical divergence uh, from supporting Israel to now wanting to support Israel as long as Israel will allow Hamas to exist and continue to um, threaten the very existence of Israel every single day. And I think that um, there should be a major realignment on on regarding people's pe who, which party people support. If you don't support Israel and this and, and President Biden and his party clearly do not. Many within the party right. in the halls of Congress are now opposed to Israel. That should inform the American people. I, I think you're absolutely right. This is one of those very stark 
uh, starkly divided issues. I mean, there's one that's clear contrast between the two parties on this issue. But I, I want to press you on a minute because I want you to, to, to yeah. talk to our listeners and our viewers about this. You talk about supporting Iran, uh, su supporting Hamas. Th that's not rhetoric. That's what we've been doing with our funding. <laughs> Explain that. Right. Well, that's exactly right. We have removed the sanctions from Iran. They've received hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, which they use to uh, to fuel, so to speak, their proxies. And those proxies include Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, Islamic Jihad. They are in Syria. They are in Afghanistan. They are in Iraq. They are causing these problems all in the region. And we've not only allowed them to do that, but we've essentially given them the green light. This president is so desperate to get a nuclear deal with Iran that he's willing to not only risk the safety and the security of Jews in Israel, but the safety and security of the free world, including the United States. And let's remember, Iran considers the great Satan to be the United States. The smaller Satan is Israel. And with the ballistic missile capability coupled with the nuclear weapon, that basically gives them entree to reaching the United States. And they have said, that that is their intention, is to obliterate the United States and obliterate Israel. That is the issue here that most people don't realize. And so when I say that President Biden and his administration are on both sides of the war, asking money for Israel while telling Israel, well, you have to, you have to institute a ceasefire, while telling Israel you can't attack Rafa and the, and the uh, terrorists that are in you know, housing themselves in there and that, you, that uh, you must imperil yourself so that we can have an Iran nuclear deal. We, you know, the United States of America, through the Biden administration, doesn't want to offend Iran. So Israel is just going to have to take more casualties. That's essentially the message that the president is sending. And now, accordingly, Chuck Schumer is sending the same message. And, and I just want folks to understand that, and I know you've seen the classified briefings, I've seen the open source briefings, that the money that we've released to Iran has gone to these uh, these terrorist organizations and entities. That's not speculation. That, that has, that's been proven. We know that that's happening. While they're arming Hamas, there's reports just coming out last week while I was in Israel that the United States, the Biden administration, is slow walking the uh, munitions to Israel that they need to execute this war against Hamas. Can you speak to that? That's that's exactly right. They have been slow walking. And of course, they will blame it on Congress and this uh, this uh, this aid package, which we sent, by the way, the House of Representatives sent an aid package passed in the House to the Senate. They won't take it up. And in the meantime, making sure that uh, that people in Gaza receive this uh, these food and humanitarian assistance that otherwise Hamas would be providing uh, would have to be because Hamas is their government. That's who they voted in. That's who the people in Gaza voted to be their government. So, um, so the American taxpayers are paying for this uh, this food and shelter program through it comes through Hamas and through an organization called the United Nations Relief and Workers Agency. And 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 while that's all happening, they're telling Israel to stand down. At the same time, they're telling Israel, they're telling the Prime Minister of Israel, the leader of Israel that uh, the, the, the West no longer wants him to be in a power. He's the duly elected leader of that country. Right. And, uh, and so they're working day and night to remove him. This is astounding that the United States government, is. this administration, working to remove him. Yeah. yeah they won't, as you said, they won't do that to China, but they'll do it to our greatest ally, Israel. Very right. quickly, we've got like 30 seconds left. Speaking of China, uh, the House Oversight Committee, which you're a part of, launched a major investigation into the CCP. What can we anticipate there? Well, it's going to be very difficult, obviously, to get information out of the CCP. Even though you can travel to China, they're never really going to let you see the things that you want to see, like the concentration camps the forced organ harvesting program, the things that seem to come from the 1930s in Germany, yet they come in the 21st century in China. But I think we are going to try and, uh, and, and more granularly show the American people all the way that China is subverting the United States of America and, and using our own policies to our own demise so that Americans can be aware so that uh, so they'll understand when policies finally are made towards China that they need to support them. 
Well, we're going to want to follow that very closely. So we look forward to uh, having you join us to show us what the committee has uncovered with that. Congressman Scott Perry, always great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Tony. God bless you.